Yo, yo, everyone, Mango here, and welcome back to another episode for the online trading card game Shadow Era. So today I'm going to be looking at, again, the top players, and we're going to be taking a look at the top score, number two, XY Dark Ninja. I don't think I mentioned it last time, but TJ actually stands for Team Juggernauts, XY stands for... I don't know, a fun guild? <laughs> I don't remember, but XY is uh, a Chinese guild, if I remember correctly, and they are one of the two main Chinese guilds. Uh, they have their own chat. Uh, they don't they don't hang out with us too much in Telegram, but they have their own in the uh, QQ app. So let's go ahead. We're going to tap on XY Dark Ninja, and let's check out some of his games. So Dark Ninja, whoa, he had actually had a, a pretty bad losing streak there. But he's still he's still at the top of the uh, at the at the score. So let me see. Actually, he was doing pretty good. Uh, if I remember correctly, when he plays Garth, he likes to play a, a fatter deck Garth. So let me see. Cocaine Kev, two forty nine. This, this guy's been around. You know what? This is look at this one. Uh, Chacon. He lost that. Usually, it's it's a pretty tough uh, pull against uh, rogues as as a blood fang. But I mean, he did beat one there. Let's see if we can find a similarly rated rated guy. 290, 26, 245, Dark Ninja. See here he lost to a Blood Fang as a Lance. So he's been kind of playing different decks. He hasn't really been sticking to one. Look at here, he was playing um, a Tala. I almost want to watch that one, but he, the, his opponent was a, a lower, kind of a lower rated. But he lost to Logan. Logan all of a sudden is creeping up with a bunch of wins with these new cards. <laughs> Not bad to see. Let me see. So come on. K oh, hey, look at this one. We have K.A. Noble Ishao. That's close to a 280 rating, and he's he was 293 at the time. Um, I might check that one. Yeah, let's go ahead and watch that one. Let's check out that one. Okay, so he's play, he was playing Tala at this time. Oh, look at the playmat and the sleeves. This is the custom playmat and sleeves for the guild. You see, he's got that little XY right there on the interior. These guys killed it, man. XY absolutely killed it with their... With their uh, what they chose i think it's a million to to get the the mats and then a million to get the sleeves as well uh, in our gold the, the other in-game currency and but uh I, I think i think i heard that one of their guild members actually drew this which if it's true is insane uh if not if they stole it from somewhere who cares it looks awesome <laughs> i mean it is it just looks absolutely i mean i i would I, w I would like to become an honorary member just to have this this setup but anyway okay let's, let's get back to the game so let me see dude uh, what did he? So he did play Blood Frenzy on turn three. Blood Frenzy is, of course, an attachment you place on your hero. You you take one damage at the start of each of your turns, but you also get to draw a card, and uh, that's that, that's actually one of the best draw engines in the game. There are multiple ways to get rid of it now within the game, but for the most part, it ends up sticking around. Uh, the one hero you don't like to see very often as a warrior is just Jericho because his special ability, his shadow ability, allows you to remove an attachment, so he can just eat up the Blood Frenzy on turn four just because uh, just uh, the easiest out of all heroes available to you and you see here we get to see the new uh, weapon gemstone javelin so what it does is it deals damage equal to its uh, attack and durability value but then it, it's destroyed at the end of the turn so but you see there he was able to use it first to get rid of the first ally by using its uh, ability and then he buffed it up with his attack and killed off the second ally so that's even making a some headway in serena now that's that's interesting to see i don't play serena very much so and uh, noble is I'll, I'll take his uh, his word for it obviously here that it's a good thing to do whoa what do we got here nice i've never seen that combo before okay so th that ally first he played it out so that um he could remove the other ally he just sends it back to the, his opponent's hand and then that the ability he played afterwards allows you to target uh, an ally, send it back to its owner's hand, I believe it says. Let me see. Let's see if I can check this out real quick. Oh, I can't check it out when it's in the graveyard, huh? Damn. Okay. But since that ally was was owned by him, I don't know. Is that the way it's supposed to work? I gotta I gotta check on that. I actually don't know. I don't have a correct explanation for it. Oh, okay. Let's check this out. So what he did here is he played out his Yari ally. He used Tala's ability on on the ally here. Oh, look at this! Nice. So he's gonna come in. He steals the uh, he steals the weapon from the grave just to be able to take a whack with it on his opponent. And uh, Tala's special ability is actually that she gives an ally, a friendly ally, plus one attack and plus one health. 
and then it also gets protector. That's why you see it raised above the other allies. That means that uh, his opponent can't touch these other allies without first removing that. So you can think of it as like a wall uh, protecting the other allies. Okay, but she's able to go ahead and kill it off. Ooh, black market. He's going to draw a card from his opponent's hand, or from his opponent's deck. Okay, and let's see what we got going on here now. Ooh, okay, so the Yari captain is back. So I'm guessing he's going to... He's going to turn one of these allies into a protector. Oh, maybe not. Okay. I was thinking he would throw... Wow, he's actually doing really good. I've seen this deck before, just this Yari Tala-based deck. And it, it can make pretty good runs. I've seen people do really good with it. I, 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 sh I wanted to play it more myself. I wanted to do a little spotlight on it. Because it's uh, one of the other unique decks that has kind of showed up with the, uh, with the new cards being placed into the game. Grave robber. So here you get to disc. Whoa! Look at all this stuff going on. I can't even follow what the hell is happening. Damn. Okay. So. <laughs> um, damn. I don't even know what to say there. It, this just. <laughs> uh, when this card. <laughs> uh, okay. So a lot of stuff happened there. Um, maybe don't worry about it if you're a newer player, because it'd be a little too advanced for you to try to play with. Uh, Noble Shao K. Noble Shao is, is a long time player. Yeah, he was able to say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to try playing this stuff and see what I can get out of it. And maybe it was just some deck testing, but I doubt it because he, he's at 274 rating, so he's probably been having some uh, some success with it. It's just, I don't even know how to explain what really happened. I know when you play that ally, the Grave Robber, out, you can discard a card from your hand. And so he did, he chose uh, the Buccaneer. So you saw the Buccaneer come down into play on his side because whenever the Buccaneer is discarded from your hand, it actually, or just, yeah, whenever it's discarded, it, it actually enters play instead. And also, because he, he played the Grave Robber, he got to pull the top item, I believe, or the top item or ally from his opponent's hand. Ah, I got, I got to take a look at it afterwards. But that's why you saw a card come from his uh, opponent's graveyard, I mean, go to his hand when he played the Grave Robber. So in the end here, it didn't matter because he got he got totally wasted by that Tala. But uh, let's go real quick, real quick, real quick to the... Let's go to the deck. We'll clear this. Let's just load up a, a Rogue. Let's go to Filter. Let's show Class Restricted only. And then we'll do Allies. And that should put, yeah, Grave Robber right in front. Okay, so there's Grave Robber. When he's summoned, you may dis after turn two, you may discard a target card in your hand and put the top ally or I item in opponent's graveyard into your hand. So that's what, I don't know what it was. It was it was an item or it was an ally, and it went from his opponent's graveyard to his, uh, to his hand. So pretty cool little card. Uh, very niche. Doesn't work in many things, but, you know, you could try it in multiple ways. Let me see. So let's go ahead. We'll search. Uh, X, Y, and it was dark. I shouldn't have to put more than that. Oh, look, there's a dark masks. Okay. Uh, let's, let's finish this off then with dark ninja. Search. Okay, there we go. So dark ninja. Uh, let's see how you beat Cocaine Kev. Cocaine Kev's actually been around a while too, if I remember correctly. So let's see. And, ah, oh, the playmats. BT. It's kind of like a heavy metal playmat, so it, it, I do like it as well. But man, XY's playmat and sleeves. <sighs> oh, look at, and I was right. Look at uh, XY Dark Ninja. When he plays uh, Garth, man, he loves playing the, the 80 card decks, just like uh, BP Shadow Man. That's uh, all he ever plays, man. He loves the 80 card Garth decks. And uh, so does uh, Dark Ninja. So let's see how this how this went his way. Because uh, some, you know, a lot of times it's it's hard to have consistency with 80 card decks, but uh, sometimes these guys do pretty well with them. You see, so he's able to have to turn three night owl. That really helps. Opponent has turn four. He plays on a night owl of his own. Just coming in hard on on a uh, dark ninja here, trying to trying to race him down. Let's see what our boy dark ninja here has on turn four. So he's gonna kill off the opposing night owl. But his Night Owl gets to stay untouched. So Night Owl's ability, just real simply, oh, rest for the weary. So he's going to draw two cards. Uh, if there was a location in play, that would actually that's actually kind of a ally removal. Because what it does is it takes any ally on your opponent's side and puts them on top of 
the uh, on top of their deck. And so he comes in, deals another two damage. He's got a weapon in play now, so I wonder if uh, Dark Ninja is going to go ahead and just attack into that weapon. I'm guessing he will because he can't just leave the Night Owl sitting there. And he might as well because he draws a card from it. Ooh, he's got an Ankle Breaker of his own. He's going to go ahead. He's going to take a little piece out of that Knight and probably just kill it off then with the Night Owl. Oh, decided not to. Okay. I wonder if he just forgot to attack. Oh, Stop Thief. Stop Thief comes down, gets rid of that. Oh, nice. Ironmonger comes down, gives one more durability to that weapon. So he's able to give one durability to any weapons or armors uh, when you play him. And so he's able to keep that weapon active a little longer unless Dark Ninja has any has a uh, stop thief of his own to break it. Let's see. I don't think he does. Otherwise, he probably would have played it first. Got another rest for the worry to draw two more cards. Got another Night Owl. Okay, so he's got two Night Owls out. He's going to go ahead and just use his ability to finish off that ally so his ability actually does one damage and then all other damage to that ally is doubled but here he just got rid of it because he didn't want to look at it anymore I guess and we see uh, okay we're gonna stop that let's go so cocaine so he comes in he kills off that one ally and then he's able to activate his hit list whenever you whenever an ally is killed you're able to draw two cards all right he comes in Wow, look at that. All right, so he's got a Tainted Oracle down. He's able to buff up the durability on that weapon again by another plus one. Dark Ninja here. Ooh, Tempest Gorge. Nice. So that's an interesting uh, location for him to have. I wasn't expecting that. And so what it does is it makes uh, it, it makes him able to send allies back to his, uh, to his hand if he wants. So if he has allies that have... Uh, abilities to activate on draw he can always recycle them back into his hand and play them even after Ooh, nathan nice let's see what nathan nice pulls down with him oh he didn't pull anything he must have pulled an item so nathan nice when you play him you draw a card if that card is an ally then you get to play that ally for free so you pull another six or seven cost ally out comes down for free so that's a seven you paid seven but you could have potentially 14 uh resource cost in play and oh no he did he pulled the tainted oracle Okay, so he did. So he did. He was able to pull a Tainted Oracle, which is still a good card. Oh, Stop Thief. So he's finally able to get rid of that um, Ankle Breaker. And so here he, pull, oh, he pulls a Coercion. Nice. So Coercion allows you to take control of an opposing ally and utilize it as you wish for your turn. But then it goes back under their control. Unless... We'll see, unless you have cards that allow you the option to pull it back into your hand. Because if you do, then you can take control of it. Okay, so now he has an Eris. Woo! This is actually looking pretty bad. I'm surprised he won this. So he comes in, he hits with the Eris for five. He comes in, he hits with the Nathan Nias for five. And then he comes in with the Oracle. So here he's going to go ahead and take control of the Eris. And he'll be able to kill off the Nathan Nias, that's for sure. Yep, see, there's the Coercion. And he's going to use his ability. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, I think he made a mistake there. He forgot to use the ability first. If he would have used the ability first, he would have been able to do hero. He would have been able to kill it off with just the Eris. Okay, so he kills Tainted Oracle. His opponent gets to draw two cards. Whenever that ally dies, you draw two cards. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, he used the location to send an, his ally back to his hand. And so now he gets to play the ally next turn. So awesome combo there from him. Uh, something that you don't get to see very often. And for, it was what, for two shadow energy, you get to return an, an ally under your control to your hand. So he effectively stole that ally from his opponent for five resources and two shadow energy. It was, it was expensive to do, but it, it's an Eris Fate Weaver with a 5-6 body. That's pretty tough. Oh my god, now he's got the Oliver Fagan. Oh wow. Okay, so that is where things turned. That location, and the, then the gen the general of Anoxio being able to seek that attachment to play onto his opponent's ally and steal it. And so even even though things were looking really bad, look now it's 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 almost this is where you can see oh man this is this is what happened this is where it went this is where it went the other way for him. I mean it's the, look at that health value 25 to six. Rabble Rouser comes down. It, Rabble Rouser another new card. It draws you a card, gives your uh, rogue allies plus two attack, but then they have meek, so you can't attack the hero, only opposing allies. 
Oh, what's he, he's going to search for an ill-gotten gains. Yep. So that ally for two shadow energy allows you to search for an I, item of cost four or greater, which is perfect because ill-gotten gains cost four. And now he's going to kill off some allies, draw cards, and that's going to be raising up Oliver Fagan's attack. See, five, because he has an attack value of one plus how many cards you have in your hand. Oh, my God, a Nathan Ias. Wow. Okay. Uh, looks like he didn't. He wasn't able to play whatever he pulled, though. Let's see if he attacks in with the Oliver. Looks like he's not going to attack in with the Oliver. No, he, he decides he doesn't want to get the Oliver uh, uh, disabled. You see, every time this weapon deals damage to your allies, it disables it. And I'm thinking here, it, you just go for the hero. Go for, I would just go for the hero, deal two damage, because you're going to have other Nathan Ice. You see, if you deal two damage, you'll be at four. And you're going to have a Nathan Ice, and you're going to have more Eris in your, in your deck. And so you're just going to have to pray that you pull into one of those so that you can win the game. But actually, now that I think about it, he doesn't have enough time anyway. Because the game, he still needs two more turns. Uh, before he's at four shadow energy to be able to haste anything in and who you saw there he, he got to utilize the location again to send this guy back to his hand and then he played him out to, st to steal that ally of cost three or less so that was a pretty awesome game actually uh, I'm glad why we watched that because we got to see some stuff that you don't normally get to see and there you go all right so that, that was an interesting game to, to watch and uh, I think what we'll do is let's just go ahead and we'll take a closer look real quick for those of you that aren't that aren't uh, that aren't familiar with that location. Let's see. We'll go ahead. Actually, I don't need to even clear this. So we'll go here, filter, we'll go location, okay, and shoulder. Where is it? There it is, right there. So when an item or attachment is destroyed, it is exiled. Target friendly ally is returned to your hand. So that he was able to use with coercion, right? So it, at that time, it was a friendly ally because it was on your side of the board. So he's able to steal that ally and put it back into his hand. So let's go ahead. Let's go here and let's check out the, the rogues. And we'll just go with the ability coercion. So we'll go. We'll just go ability. And then I'll show class restricted only. So I only see rogue stuff. And that'll help us get through this quicker. Go here. There it is. Coercion. So attach to target opposing ally until the end of your turn. While coercion is uh, target opposing ally, to, while coercion is attached, that ally is under your control. So see, you get to steal control of an ally. Got Oliver back there. Who's this dude? Anyway, so yeah, you get to steal control of an ally, deal damage with it, use its ability, whatever. And then if you have that location in play, boom. So that was great because remember he also had general. So he so he has this all planned out in his in his mind. You know, one of the win conditions for him obviously so he has the location he has the coercion and then he has the ally general of unaxio so i'm going I'm to take this off because general of unaxio is not a rogue ally but then i'm going to go ahead here and put this to five so this is kind of cool too because this gets to show you how you can go through your collection to see exactly what you want general of anoxio when general of anoxio is summoned you may seek an attachment that can attach to a hero so this is how he's able to get that coercion so whenever he pulls into one of these so having this guy effectively makes him feel like you have eight copies of coercion because you can have this guy and then have the four of this guy and then you have four coercion so you know you, you have you double your chances of getting it and then he probably has the other location uh called uh so Cilo, or not so Cilo, the one that allows you to seek allies will cost five or greater. So that and that gives them another chance to look for that guy. All right. So uh, we only got to see two games there this time. I'm already at 18 minutes, so I don't want to I don't want to go any longer. So again, uh, thanks for watching this uh, this episode of the top ladder players, and I will see you guys with the next video.